One of the top level considerations for the developer of a server side web application framework is how to match URLs to the resources on the server so that the correct one processes the request. The most straightforward approach is that you map URLs to the physical files on the disk and this is the approach that has been implemented by the ASP.NET Core team for Razer Pages Framework. Now there are some rules on how Razer Pages Framework matches URL to files and how rules can be customized to give different results if needed. The first rule is that Razer Pages needs a root folder. By default, the folder has been named Pages and its location is inside the root folder of the web application project. You can configure another folder as the root folder in the application configuration services method inside the startup class, but that is beyond the scope of this course, so we will leave that as the default page. If we have any requirements that we had to change that, we would of course take a look at that. Let's switch back to the application that we have. Right here you see the root folder is the pages folder and all of the pages resides inside that. Of course we can add areas here and we can add pages inside the areas folder then that will become the root folder for the application. Another rule is that the file extension should not be included inside the URL path. So right here you see index.cshtml inside the URL we will only mention index. Then let me switch back to the presentation and the third rule is that index.cshtml is the default file. Which means if a file name is missing from the URL the request will be mapped to index.cshtml inside that folder. Now let's take a look at few examples. In the first example we have www.domain.com. This will map to the pages folder and then look for index.cshtml page. Since we have not defined anything in the URL, index is the default page. In the second example, we have www.domain.com forward slash index. Again, in this, it will look for the same index page inside the pages folder because we have explicitly defined the index page. Finally, we have www.domain.com forward slash account. Now here, it has two ways to find the page. First, it will try to find inside the pages folder First, it will try to find inside pages folder a file named as account.cshtml. If it finds that, it will render that. If it doesn't find that, then it thinks that account could be a subfolder name under pages. So it will check inside the pages folder if there is a folder called account and inside that it will try to find index.cshtml. So we have few examples here for routing. Let's see this in action. Let's go to our project and run the application. In here you can see the URL is localhost and we do not have anything else. So that means by default it is loading the index page. If we go back to our application, solution explorer, double click index, you can see the text is welcome and that is what we are seeing right here. If we explicitly defined index here, it will still load the same page. Now if we click on privacy here, you can see it is adding privacy and if we go back to the solution, privacy is inside pages so you can directly access that. Let me stop the application and show you something else. I'll add a new folder and I'll call this with my name Brugain here and I will move privacy inside Brugain. Let's run our application and try to access the privacy again. If we click here, it will not load anything because privacy doesn't exist in the same location. In order to access that, you have to type Brugain forward slash privacy. And with this, it loads the privacy page correctly. So that way you can see that the linking of all the pages is exactly what you see here. 
I'll move the privacy back inside the pages folder and I'll delete my folder, not rename. Perfect. So this was a brief overview on how routing works and we'll be using more tag helpers and routing as we proceed with the course. In this video, we will take a look at tag helpers. Tag helpers are brand new to ASP.NET Core. Microsoft looked at the success around the other libraries like AngularJS, React, and others and decided that implementing an Angular directive like experience in the new ASP.NET was so important to the adoption of ASP.NET Core and because of which they decided to create tag helpers from grounds up. Tag helpers enable server-side code to participate in creating and rendering HTML elements inside the Razor files. Though there are similarities between Angular directives and tag helpers, there is a major difference. Tag helpers are for server-side rendering, while AngularJS directives are all about client-side rendering. Now you might be wondering how tag helpers are compared to HTML helpers if you have worked with previous versions of .NET Core. HTML helpers are really just methods throughout your Razor markup. Tag helpers on the other hand are very focused around HTML elements and much more natural to use. Now let's switch back to the application and let's take a look at few tag helpers that we already have. In here, let's go on the index page and we do not have any tag helpers associated inside here. But if we go on underscore layout, there should be plenty of tag helpers. Right here, you can see the tag helpers ASP area and ASP page. When we have to redirect to any of the Razor pages, we will use the tag helper ASP page and then we'll define the path. Right here, we want to go to the index page, which is inside the pages folder. Hence, we have defined forward slash index. Then if you scroll down with more navigations, we again have those tag helpers. If you scroll down further, right here, we have another tag helper. And with the script, we have the ASP append version tag helper. We will be using more tag helpers for labels, forms, and all of the buttons. But we'll do that when we proceed. But the main thing about tag helpers is you can use your regular HTML tag and you can just append a tag helper like you can with other JavaScript frameworks. Also, I want to show you few similarities that we have between the HTML helpers and tag helpers. Both HTML helpers and tag helpers perform the same functionality. But here you can see that the label tag is so not HTML friendly for HTML helper. But when you use tag helper, you'll be using the same label tag, class attributes. All you have to do is add ASP for tag helper. If you do not understand all of this right now, do not worry as we proceed and start coding. This will start to make much more sense. 